Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Church on this third Sunday after Easter. We are pleased to have you join us live, uh, those who are here in person, and for those of you on our three online platforms, we welcome you uh, and we uh, urge you to invite your fr friends to uh, watch our liturgy from St. Mark's Church every Sunday at 1030. You can invite people to our website where they will be able to click on a button and uh, join us either on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we are open for in-person worship and we are able to have 50% of the church full so you are most welcome any Sunday to join us. This Sunday, following Mass at 12 o'clock, we invite you to the Zoom coffee hour, a discussion of the Gospel and the homily, where you can argue with the priest about what he said in the homily. So uh, we join you, you can join us. The Zoom invitation went out on Saturday. Special thanks today to our worship team, <coughs> Amanda and Lucia Costanzo, Frank Weaver, our cantors, organist Gail Craven, lector Dr. George, sacristans Verna and Carl Emery, and our um, camera and sound engineers, Julie Combs and Mike Villano. Uh, God bless you and thank you. Yesterday, April 17th, Bishop Daniel Gutierrez celebrated a special morning prayer to confirm me as your priest and rector uh, about two years after the fact, but it was a wonderful celebration and we thank him for his care of St. Mark's uh, special thanks to all of you who participated and attended. The bishop said at the end of the liturgy, he's coming and he expects us to have lunch for him when he comes. So, Holly will have to work on that. I know you're here somewhere, Holly. You were. Oh, there, there oh, back in your old seat. Okay. Um, in other announcements, Heart and Hands Community Center, many of you may know or maybe you've forgotten that St. Mark's uh, is a contributor and a host to the executive offices of Hearts and Hands Community Center on the second floor of the parish house. Uh, we are supporting this community ministry for underprivileged children in our mobile home parks. You can help improve a child's life by sponsoring a child for $60 a week in a summer camp this summer in Glenmore at Indian Run. Uh, please consider a gift to children uh, through our website, through PayPal or credit card, or you can simply write a check and mail it to St. Mark's Church for $60 mark at Hearts and Hands Camp. Uh, a child this summer will benefit. And as you know, many children have had a difficult year with all of the Zoom uh, work and working from home and not having the normal socialization of school. So this is a important mental health uh, activity for children, especially in the mobile home parks. Next Sunday, or next Monday, tomorrow at 7 p.m., St. Mark's um, Vestry meets, and we uh, urge you to mark that on your calendar. And now, let us turn to our leaflet, Holy Eucharist Rite 2, Please sit or kneel for confession. Let us make our confession. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And now may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please rise. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. We continue with our opening hymn.
Friends, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. reading from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, <coughs> whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself had made him strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you have acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, and his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful, 
When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first book of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he has revealed to take away your sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome again to all of you who are back for the first time in many weeks, months. We're very glad that you're with us in person. <clears throat> uh, it must be a little strange feeling to come back after eight months or six months, uh, but we are very glad that you are with us. Well, 
When the gospel mentioned fish, uh, I remembered that Pennsylvania trout season opened April 3rd. Matter of fact, uh, Mark Combs gave me a few trout that he caught. Uh, April 3rd, trout season opened, and it made me remember that once I felt that I was a great fisherman. Once I, I felt, once I felt I was an expert. When I was about nine or ten, my father introduced me to trout fishing, and one morning took me to a neighbor's farm that had a lake filled with rainbow and brown trout. And my father showed me how, you know, to bait the hook with the night crawler and uh, how to cast the line out with a bobbin, how to put your finger on the line. Any fisherman here? You know, hold that line and uh, feel the nibble on the end. And suddenly, the trout were biting. And every time I cast my line into that lake, I caught a trout. I'm a little trout. I mean, 20, 24 inch big. I caught at least eight before noon. And by lunchtime, I knew. I was good. I knew I had the cut. Matter of fact, I felt like a trout whisperer. By afternoon, I was sure I was an expert. I felt big, confident, smart. I brought home 15 trout, and I, I showed it to everybody and displayed my skill. Yeah, I thought I was an expert. Yeah, they were big, they were great fish. Uh, so, <laughs> I felt like an expert. I felt like I was just the best fisherman in the world. And I thought, well, a few days later, I'm going back. So I went back to the lake by myself alone. And I discovered out there was the farmer that owned the lake. And he was throwing stuff into the lake. And the water was white. And the fish were eating wildly. And I said, hey, what are you throwing? What are you feeding the fish? He said, worms. I said, I, I feed them worms every day so my little grandchildren can catch the fish. I said, you feed them every day? Worms? Yeah. He said, my little three-year-old grandchildren, yeah, they, they can catch fish. Was I displacing? I felt like an expert a couple days before. I had the feeling I was highly skilled. I was sure I was a great fisherman, but I was wrong. deck was already stacked. I wasn't great. I was wrong. And what I felt was true really wasn't. And that is every disciple of Jesus' problem too. What we feel like often isn't true. See, today in the, in the gospel, Jesus came and stood among the disciples and said, peace be with you. And the disciples were at first startled. They felt startled, then they felt terrified, totally frightened. <clears throat> they thought they were seeing a ghost. They felt like they saw a ghost. So Jesus says, look, look at my hands, look at my feet. <coughs> Touch me. Ghosts don't have flesh and bone. And while they still felt frightened and were disbelieving, to confirm his reality that he was resurrected bodily from the dead, Jesus asked them for something to eat. And out came the fish. Out came the fish. Now it wasn't trout. Maybe it was sloppy. I don't know. <coughs> but Jesus ate the fish in their presence. Why? To confirm the fact, number one, he was risen from the dead bodily, alive. Two, that he, the Son of God, the breath of God, the Spirit of God, was human as well as God, real enough to eat fish. And that meant that God's substance and human flesh were mixed. Today, Jesus is revealing that fact. Today, Jesus is teaching disciples of all time that facts, reality, not our feelings or our emotions, lead us to faith in a real resurrected God. The facts, reality, not how we feel, lead us to see the resurrection, the resurrected Jesus. The facts, reality, not, not how we feel, frightened or whatever. The religious doctrine of Judaism of that day, and all religions for that matter, felt and taught that human flesh and divine 
divine substance could never mix. That's not possible. Jewish teachers felt strongly that the spiritual world and the material world never mixed. I mean, they felt that it would be a dishonor for God to come down and be in the material world, to take on, would be the great step down. His honor couldn't suffer such shame. I mean, it's like the Queen of England going bowling. No, it, God couldn't do that. But the facts, the facts of the gospel said otherwise. Crucified Jesus was re res resurrected. He appeared to as many as 500 people. We know that from uh, uh, Acts and St. Paul. And God in the flesh came and ate fish with his disciples, broiled fish. I mean, they even went into the recipe. It wasn't boiled. It wasn't grilled. It was broiled fish. The feeling of terror and fear that they initially felt were not reliable guides to see the real Jesus. They were disbelieving. Well, that can't be. Reality, the flesh and blood, the reality, the facts, were, yes, that's what's here. A real Jesus was there. <clears throat> the feeling of terror and fear were not reliable gods, guides to see Jesus. Emotions did not lead the disciples to reality. It took the fact of eating fish, a human act, to confirm that Jesus was alive in the flesh and also God in the flesh. And sometimes our feelings, our emotional desires, cloud our faith, blind us. In fact, a lot of Christians feel the church should be pure, and spotless. You know, a lot of people had the idea that the church was really a museum of saints, of white-robed saints waving American flags or whatever country they were from, and the facts are quite different. In the divine plan for the church, it was a low-life, unpatriotic thief who was the usher for the king of kings into heaven. You remember the crucifixion. The usher into heaven was a, a, a rebellious thief, an unpatriotic thief who was crucified. Next to, he was the escort for Jesus into heaven. It wasn't some great prophet. It wasn't some great, it was a thief. First in line to heaven. The facts not feelings, lead us to faith in the real God. And fact is, faith in Jesus is an action. If you trust Jesus, it's an action, a sacred action. We use the word love for faith. Faith in action is love. Love is the power to serve. It's not a feeling. It's not romance. It's not lust. Love is an action to serve someone else. It's not an emotion. It's a concrete thing that you do. Our problem is we like our feelings. We like our feelings before any facts. And you know what my favorite feeling is? You know what my favorite feeling is? I mean, it's, it's better than joy. It's better than... Um, uh, just about any feeling you can have. You know what my favorite feeling is? My favorite feeling, maybe yours. My favorite feeling is being right. <laughs> I love the feeling, I'm right, you're wrong. I like that. My daughter, when she was a teenager, no, uh, no comment on you, Lucy. My daughter, when she was a teenager, had the awful habit of saying to us, See, I told you, I'm right. You're wrong. It didn't matter what it was. I'm right, you're wrong. And you know, she loved that, and I, I had to admit, I love it too. I love the feeling of being right. She loved it. I loved it. Maybe you love being right. The disciples of Jesus loved the feeling of being right too. But they were wrong. They were wrong. So today, Jesus invites you to give up your feelings for facts that lead to faith which
which is acting in love. Faith is acting in love because you love Jesus. Today our world is filled, filled with things that are unloving. Today our world is filled with feelings of terror, of fear. I mean, you read about the FedEx warehouse, eight people were murdered again, another mass shooting, a gunman killed them. Uh, and then there was uh, a, uh, a riot or an insurrection in our capital. There's COVID, we're just getting over. Our world is filled with feelings of terror and fear. So Jesus invites you to give up your feelings for facts. Jesus especially invites you to give up your feelings of always being right. And I like that. Oh, I like being right. But Jesus says you can give it up. The question is, oh yes, the question today is, would you give up your feelings about all those hot button issues? Would you give up your feelings about those hot button items? The feeling that you are right about the COVID pandemic. The feeling you're right about gun control. The feeling you're right about immigration. The feeling you're right about racially. Could you give up your feelings for the fact would you give up your feeling of being right for the fact, the reality, that Jesus loves the people, the very people you disagree with? Jesus loves them too and acted for those who you dislike for their positions. See, the facts are, Jesus acted in love even with his enemies. He served even his enemies. He let a thief usher him into heaven. Because the reality of love, of serving in love, leads us to God. The reality, the fact is, serving in love leads us to God. So Jesus stood among those who felt they were right and said, Now, friends, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us sit or kneel for the prayers of the faithful. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear us. Today we especially pray for those in our community, our friends, our families. We pray for Marilyn Bremer, Mary Ellen Cha Chaplin, Pat Clark, Marge Darby, Rose Diano. We pray for Bob and Lois Schultz, we pray for Sandy Schaefer, for Diane Spath, and those that we now name both silently in our hearts or aloud to you. Lord, in your mercy. And now, almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord always be with you. Please Greet each other with the symbol of peace, but not too close. Uh, this morning, we do wish all those on our online congregation and all those uh, on Facebook and YouTube, peace of the Lord. A special peace goes out to uh, Mary Ellen Chaplin, to Pat Clark. We wish you peace of the Lord to Marge Darby, to uh, Jim and Laurie Finn. Uh, to Jamie, Becky, Lily, and Curtis Hartran of Peace of the Lord, to Mary Hayes, to Liz and Joe Hughes, to Linda Jones. Uh, we wish Wanda Kosempel Peace of the Lord. We especially uh, say Peace of the Lord to Susan Widener and Leslie Wood. Uh, peace of the Lord to Sue, Anna, Liam, and Sadie Laura. Who else shall we wish God's peace to? Sally and George Nickel, peace of the Lord to you and to your herd. Bob and Jane Shingle. Bob and Jane Shingle, peace of the Lord be with you. As we conclude sharing the sign of peace, at this time normally we would uh, have an offering. 
Offerings may be deposited in the alms basin at the door at the rear of the church. If you miss it on the way in, you can catch it on the way out. Today we're very fortunate in having an offertory anthem by our cantors. But before we do that, I would like to ask our usher, Joe Orlando, if he would bring the gifts forward. Continue now with our offertory anthem. We continue with our offertory par prayers on page 17. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And so the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly. We are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. By his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Brothers and sisters, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. And now please come forward through the center aisle to receive.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us that in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Please bow your head and pray for God's blessing. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn.
at this time, I would like to uh, invite uh, Julie Cohn and Holly Weaver forward to the uh, lectern here. Uh, they have a very gracious gift to give, and I'll let them explain that better than I can. Uh, so Holly and Julie. So yesterday was a special day um, that we welcomed Father Tim, but we also wanted to remember Mother Masha. She also um, does so much for us as a congregation, and she really got a two-for-one deal, I think. So uh, you really complete us, and uh, we just love your support and um, your Bible studies, everything that you do, all your readings. You're just very selfless with us. So uh, we want to present this Bible uh, to you today um, on behalf of the whole congregation, your whole uh, church family. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Um, it's a joy and pleasure to work with the beautiful people of Queens. Thank you so much. I shall try to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good Oxford annotated Bible. That's a good Episcopal oh, Bible. Thank you, and, and once again, uh, our thanks to all of you who joined us and Bishop Gutierrez yesterday at 10.30 for morning prayer. Uh, I was most appreciative of your presence, uh, and it's nice to be uh, officially uh, noted, or how do I say it, stated as confirmed as the rector and priest of St. Mark's. You know, I was talking about feelings versus facts, I felt like I was the priest of St. Mark's, the rector, but until yesterday, the fact is I wasn't. There's a big special letter, you know, real calligraphy and nice that the bishop uh, makes and sends out, and now it's official. I mean, it's two years after the fact, but now it's official. For two years, the feeling was I was the priest, but the fact is, not until yesterday. So... Thank you for all your help, especially those who participated, and uh, I look forward to working with you uh, far into the future uh, when we rebuild what we knew and expanded. Do you know that on average we've doubled our attendance through the online presence, through Facebook and YouTube, our usual 40 or 50 who gathered here, we're now reaching at least 100 people most Sundays, sometimes Easter 200 or 300. So as painful as COVID was, somehow God took what was not good and made something good out of it. So we want to thank God for the ability now to reach people online who we never, or people who've moved away, Diane Spath, Wanda Kosempel, all the people who can still be with you virtually. It's a new age, so thank you. Uh, and now uh, we would like to conclude with our postlude.
Gail, it is an ode to joy to see you and everyone else today. Uh, God bless you. We are open next week, and we hope you will join us next week uh, for uh, worship at the same time. Um, please rise. Let us bless the Lord.